激突ウルトラビーストどんどんバチバチ大作戦 What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to a Sun and Moon anime review of episode number 78. Last time we saw Ash take on his third grand trial against Nanu, where we saw Lycanroc has grown quite a bit. He's mastered the new move Stone Edge, he's even controlled his anger, he learns the move Counter mid battle, and finishes off Nanu with a Rockium Z move, earning Ash's third grand trial and the Lycanroc. Canium Z. Huge, great episode. Now, in today's review, we saw an episode that focused around two Ultra Beasts that we haven't seen before. If you checked out this episode, make sure you let me know what your favorite part was in the comments down below and let me know if you have any different thoughts than I do. Now, before we jump in all the way to the review, I might try something new. Uh, either in this episode or in the next couple episodes, just adding in instead of just the pictures that you'll see,、uh, I might try and add in some actual video from the episodes. We'll see how that goes.、Uh, but let's go ahead and jump straight to it. So, like I said, focusing on Ultra Beasts, and right from the beginning, we see a group of kids that, were, that we know and love are at a fireworks、uh, festival, and they're seeing all these fireworks go off, and we see a Blacephalon like. Seconds in, so you just know this whole thing is going to be、uh, focused around Blacephalon. They even picked one of the newer Ultra Beasts, which I think is really cool. The fireworks are going on forever, everyone's amazed, you know, ooh, ah,、uh, fireworks. And after the big finale, a special, like a, a weird looking firework appeared above them and it started bouncing around, and everyone started freaking out. And they were like, oh my god, what is this alien like thing? And we see it's the head of Blacephalon goes back onto his head and he starts dancing. And he's, he's dancing very much like Michael Jackson. Like when I say very much like Michael Jackson, I mean literally he was dancing like Michael Jackson. You could see him moonwalking, you could see him doing the lean that Michael Jackson did. It was pretty cool.、Um, but his head explodes into a whole lot of smoke. And just entertaining everybody. Going on, gone, and on, and on. Just he's an entertainer. He was entertaining everybody. So、that's where the episode title ran.、Um, this episode was called Clash of the Ultra Beasts Operation Boom Boom Crackle. Kind of an extra name, if you ask me. But the episode starts off where Blacephalon is still showing off. He's still demonstrating, he's still making fireworks go off. And in his explosions of fireworks, we see another Ultra Wormhole open and we see Zerka Tree come out. And after, I guess, Blacephalon noticed that Zerka Tree was there, he bowed and he left. And the group didn't see the,、uh, the other wormhole that appeared. The next morning,、um, the kids are all talking about what they saw. They're talking about Blacephalon, trying to figure out what it is. And Komala begins ringing the bell. And he's ringing it very intently. And the kids all go into their Ultra Guardian's base. Um, where we get to see some reused footage, but it's good footage, it's cool footage, but they did reuse some footage here. And we see Lusamine is calling them, and they're saying, We saw this video from Blacephalon last night, we were reviewing it, and it turns out that there was an Ultra Wormhole nearby. So they confirm that it's an Ultra Beast, they give it its name, Blacephalon. Rotom updates his data, and as they're talking, the lights go off in the place. And Pixie walks over and turns the light back on. I don't know why the lights got turned off like that. I thought it was like a power surge, but Pixie literally walked over and like flipped the switch up. And it's like, who turned the lights off? But the group all heads out.、Uh, Lusamine says, you know, we found, we found where this is happening from. There's a little power lines. Uh, and we see an Ultra Aura there, so head out. And they get to use their, you know, their Ultra Pokemon, more reused footage, but we see them head out. As the group is flying towards where the Ultra Aura was found, Pikachu and Togedemaru are feeling something's presence. You can see the electricity coming off of them. And when they arrive, they see Zerka trees there, and they're like, what the heck? That's not Blacephalon, that's not what we saw before. And Zerka Tree attacks them, wants them to go away, because Zerka Tree is absorbing the electricity from these power lines. Lusamine orders that all of the power being sent to those lines be cut off, and that's exactly what happens, which upsets Zerka Tree quite a bit. Pikachu, Togedemaru, and Chargebug land on the ground, and their job is to distract 
Zerka tree so that the others can capture it. They just want to capture it, send him back, all will be good. And we see Poi Pole, who we know has been attracted to Pikachu's electricity, runs up to Zerka tree and we can't get Zerka tree's attention. So Zerka tree winds up chasing down the group as their electric tax are drawing it in. Right as the group of Kiawe, Mallow, Lana, those guys, they go to try and capture him, Blacephalon shows up and explodes and their Pokeballs don't make it. And Blacephalon, Zerka Tree square off against each other and they start doing what Lana calls a boom boom crackle showdown, where they're just showing, trying to figure out whose blast or electricity is, is bigger. They're trying to see whose show is better and the group's like, all right, since they're launching all of their attacks, now seems like a really good time for us to try and capture them. So they all wind up and they have a nice 15 second animation showing all of them winding up and throwing the balls. And of course it just bounces off and I don't... Why'd you try that? Obviously that isn't gonna work. So they're sitting there, you know, they're still blow exploding stuff, trying to make a big explosion and Zerkatry starts spinning and spins up a universe like it's one of those it's like you could like if you search the word universe on google i'm pretty sure this is the image one of the images that will come up but it's just a universe and everyone's like well this isn't good this is gonna be trouble and another person's like yeah yeah it will and lucimine calls ash on their little watch and says you know hey um, we confirmed that this thing is called Zerkatry, and it turns out that these two are rivals and they're performing each other. As we said, they're trying to figure out whose is better. And while they're talking, Ash is like, I've got an idea. What we're going to do is we're going to make a bigger show and we're going to show them up and then we're going to capture them. And his final goal is to use Lycanroc's new Z move to finish them both off so they can capture them. So, this thing that you see here is made up of Pikachu's Electroweb, Togedemaru's Zing Zap, Chargebug's Discharge, Poplio's Bubble Beam, Steenie's Magical Leaf, Charizard, Turtonator's Flamethrower, Garchomp, Flygon, and Altaria's Fire Blast, and a Powder Snow from Alolan Vulpix to set it off. And of course, Poi Pool joins in the fun in getting the whole thing to spin, and it looks amazing. It draws in the attention of the Ultra Beasts, but they're like, nah, you ain't gonna get us. So they make an even bigger show. And, um, you know, Blacephalon is holding his head up and his, head's, his head starts like this and then it gives you bigger and then it gets even bigger. And Zerkatry, I don't know what he's doing. He's just generating electricity and moving all over the place. And he just fills up with electricity and Ash is like, Boom, it's time. And he hits it, and it's awesome. And he hits the Lycanium Z move. And, oh, it's like called Radial Edge Storm, I think it was. And man, Lycanroc looks awesome. I'm gonna take a second to talk about that. Over the last couple episodes, we've seen Lycanroc grow. Uh, I think at this point, he's reached his maximum. I don't know what more he could do. He knows Stone Edge, he has Wait, does he have to have Stone Edge in order to use his Z-move? That would make perfect sense. Anyway, he's mastered his Stone Edge, he's mastered his Z-move, he's controlled his anger. I think he's good. What the heck is Ash's other Pokemon gonna do? I think we'll see Torcat evolve into Incineroar. I'd be surprised if we didn't. Ash is known for having fully evolved fire types. I really hope we see Rowlet evolve all the way to Decidueye. That would be cool. I don't think we've seen a Decidueye yet. Maybe I'm forgetting it, but um, who else does Ash even have? I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it for now. So we need him to catch at least one more new Pokemon, I think, to make a team of six. I don't know. I don't know how much longer this anime is going. I guess they have a whole nother year. Uh, if you think that maybe the the new, the next generation, Gen 8 games that are coming to Switch next year. You would imagine maybe the anime will be caught up by then. They've still got to go through the champion, through the Pokemon League. And I really hope that this is the year that Ash winds up winning. Because in the games, you become the first champion. So this is going to be the first champion. And literally this entire series has been about Ash. Everything is revolved around Ash. I really hope he winds up winning and someone doesn't just like come out of nowhere and beat him unless it's like Gladion 
I guess that could make sense. But anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about. Uh, after the Lycanium Z move, both of the Ultra Beasts are damaged and, and they are able to capture them. Lana and Lily throw the balls and they're able to capture the Ultra Beasts. <clears throat> The following day, the Ultra Beasts are sent back home with Tapu Koko watching nearby. Um, so I'm just also trying to figure out, is Lusamine a good guy or a bad guy? Like, what is going on? I, I don't, I, I, it doesn't, it doesn't compute in my mind. This Lusamine that we see is so different from the Lusamine that we see in game. Is she just going to be good forever? Or will Team Skull slash Aether Paradise have their thing? We know Poi Pool's there, so we know Ultra Recon Squad's got to come at some point. So who's going to wind up being the actual bad guy? I don't think we've met Guzma yet. I'm so excited for more Sun and Moon anime. I wish that it was over so that I could just watch it and figure out what's going to happen. But I guess we'll have to stay tuned. Um, and then the last thing, at the school that next day, um, Kukui is telling them that the people from all of the islands in the Alola region want to see the Ultra Guardians performance from the night before where they made that humongous uh, firework display and everyone's like, I don't remember what order we did. We were kind of in the moment, so they didn't remember. And then Lana and her usual creepy self is like, this could be a business, uh, this could be a business decision. And everyone looks at her very strangely. And the episode ends. So, again, I thought it was a pretty cool episode. We saw two new Ultra Beasts that we haven't seen before. We got to see the Ultra Guardians. We got to see everybody do a little bit of everything. And, of course, we got to see the Lycanium Z moves. That's pretty big. Again, let me know your favorite parts of this episode in the comments down below. Next time, we see the shell of a Minior. We're at Mo Lane's Observatory on Ula Ula Island. We see an actual, we actually see a couple different Minior's, different colors with their shields down. And Poi Pol seems to be absolutely in love with these Minior's since they are both, from, you know, Minior from space and Poi Pol is from ultra space. I have no idea. But again, we will see you in that next episode. Let me know your feedback on these anime reviews in the comments down below so I can continue to make them better. And we'll see you next time. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.